a sense of tension? Were you aware of a police presence? Give us a sense of uh, what it's like to be there now. Well, standing here on the lawn of House of Commons, you know, there couldn't be anything far from being a part of the Commons. If you look behind me and see the fences that were erected to keep protesters away from Parliament. Uh, we're very inspired, however, by the you know citizens from every background in Canadian society, First Nations, uh, union leaders from the, the labor movement, including the union president for the oil sands workers, Dave uh, Cole, uh, Maude Barlow of the Council of Canadians, elected First Nations officials all crossed the line today in an act of peaceful civil disobedience to send a clear message to the Harper administration and to the Obama administration that the Keystone XL project is unacceptable down a path of backwards energy technology and an outdated energy source. We need clean, renewable energy now. We saw Clayton in the United States, uh, this peaceful demonstration get out of hand. I know that there are barriers placed up uh, on the Hill today. Is there any talk about crossing those barriers and creating a situation? Well, directly behind me, you can see the line that was established by the uh, by the police forces, protect you know providing security on Parliament. We had over 200 individuals climb over the barrier and sit down between the steps of Parliament and the fence that was erected. They are now being processed by the police, being charged with trespass. But again, this was an act of peaceful civil disobedience uh, done in the spirit of great social movements like the civil rights movement, like in the ongoing indigenous rights movement. And uh, we will continue to stay here until each and every single person that got arrested today has been and released. So you could be there for quite some time if this process takes a while. Well, yeah, definitely. But there's a great atmosphere. Here. It's a family atmosphere. There's solidarity activists that have been, you know, uh, uh, standing in solidarity with the arrestees. They will continue to do so throughout the day, make sure they have water. It's a beautiful day here in Ottawa to send a very clear message to Harper that we need abundant renewable energy investments. We need to take advantage of renewable energy sources like the sun that's shining down on all of the protesters today versus investing in dirty oil like the Canadian tar sands. All right. Clayton, let me play devil's advocate for a second. The Prime Minister says we've got to put our support behind this and that there indeed is lots of support for the pipeline as well because of the number of jobs it's going to create. Now, I know you're going to say the jobs will be created in the United States. They're talking about 20,000 jobs. But the Prime Minister says that there'll be a job creation on both sides of the border. So from an economic point of view, can you take a little bit of what both the U.S. President and Canadian Prime Minister are saying and understand and agree with them? Well, the U.S. President hasn't said he won't until November when he renders the final decision on the Keystone XL. In terms of Prime Minister Harper, our Prime Minister is greatly out of touch and has become the lapdog for big oil, essentially. We know that renewable energy jobs are 12 to 1 versus fossil fuel. Germany has over 250,000 workers employed by the renewable energy energy sector and produce 20% of their national energy this year alone from wind power. So the technology is there, the jobs are long term, they're not just temporary construction jobs to build a pipeline that will lock us into an energy future that is outdated and that you know risks the climate, that violates the fundamental human rights of First Nations living on the front line of extraction. We need a new economic paradigm in this country that is based in an equitable way that brings us back in line with the sacredness of our Mother Earth. Well, as you said, this is a, a big week. Certainly pipeline approval comes later from the president and the White House will have its say before the U.S. Senate decides. But obviously you're, we're going to be hearing from both sides, proponents and opponents, and we thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy.